So I want us to go through a, a little activity that will hopefully help us understand transcription and translation. But really quick, I want to give a brief summary or overview. So what we're talking about here really is gene expression. So the gene is actually just a finite piece of the DNA. So the DNA is in multiple chromosomes, okay, or for a single-celled organism, there may just be one circular chromosome, but chromosomes are made up of DNA, and genes are made up of DNA, but a gene is sort of a, a small piece, right, of all of the chromosomes there. So chromosomes have many genes on them, and we would call this the genotype, like these are the instructions for the cell. Over here on the other side, we have a protein, which would be the product of the gene, and we will call this the phenotype. And you could think of the phenotype sort of as the physical expression or the physical appearance of this particular gene. So if the gene is like the is like instructions, like blueprints for a house, then the protein product would actually be the completed house. Now, um, for, for eukaryotic cells, they have a nucleus, so the DNA of the chromosomes is going to be housed in the nucleus. For prokaryotic cells, there is no nucleus, so we don't have a membrane-bound area where this DNA is located. But in order for gene expression to occur, there actually has to be sort of this middleman, okay, called messenger or mRNA. And what it does, it carries the message that's found in the gene um, to the ribosomes because the ribosomes are the protein factories. So if we think of this in terms of a eukaryotic cell, the DNA then is housed in the nucleus. It never leaves the nucleus. The mRNA, the message, carries the message from one specific gene outside of the nucleus to the ribosome. So remember, ribosomes can either be in the cytoplasm or they can be on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And it's on the ribosome that the actual protein product gets produced. So the first step from DNA to the messenger RNA is called transcription. Okay, which requires an enzyme called RNA polymerase to make this RNA transcript. And the next process is called translation. Now, transcription is just going from a DNA language to an RNA language. So the only difference there, we're still working with nucleotide to nucleotide. The only difference is in DNA, we have A, C, G, and T, as our four bases, whereas in RNA we have, oops, excuse me, we have A, C, G, and U. So we have one substitution there. We have uracil instead of thymine. But when we go to the protein product, okay, proteins are made of amino acids. So the, the word translation there is literally like translating from one language to the next. So if I were going to translate English to Chinese or English to Arabic that has completely different um, letters or symbols that represent the language. Proteins have amino acids, and this is where the genetic code comes in. On the mRNA, there will be three nucleotides, okay, um, which we call a codon. So a codon is made of three nucleotides, and one codon, which is three nucleotides, codes for one amino acid. Now we're going to walk through how that works with the genetic code chart. Um, and, and make sure you read the chapter and view the videos. This is a very short summary um, so that we can go through this activity together. So here's our activity. What I've shown you here, this is like double-stranded DNA, okay? What would, if we're talking about a eukaryotic cell, this would be a portion of the DNA on one chromosome, right, that's found in the nucleus. So here the gene to be transcribed is located in the nucleus. Remember, we're talking about a eukaryotic cell. For a prokaryotic cell, there's no nucleus, right, so we don't have to worry about that, that separation. 
Now, the other thing I want you to see is that I, I have some portions underlined, and those represent the introns. So eukaryotic DNA has both introns and exons, okay? Um, the exons are the part that is what we call the coding region. It's going to remain, and be those codons are going to be what um, is read to produce the protein. So this first process that we're going through here is the transcription process. And what we need to do is we need to recognize that not both strands of the DNA are transcribed, only the template strand. So the bottom strand down here is what is going to serve as our template strand. And the RNA polymerase enzyme is the enzyme that's going to make an, an mRNA transcript. So it's not exactly a copy, right? Because we're using the nucleotide base pairing, the complements, but it's read directly from this template strand. So I have the first three done here for you. So in the template, when there's a T, okay, the corresponding nucleotide to that is A, because T always pairs with A. The next one we see here is an A. Now, if this were DNA we were producing, there would be a T there. But remember, RNA doesn't have a T. Instead, they have a U. It has a U, so we have a U there. And this is a C, and so C always pairs with G. So you just have to remember for this activity that T, if this is the DNA, and this is the RNA, T pairs with A, A pairs with U, C with G, and G with C. So we could go on. We've done the, the first codons and four, so we see G, G, A. So this would be C, C, U. T, T, T would be A, A, A. Okay, and then... A, G, C would be U, oops, I mean, A, G, A would be U, C, U, okay? And let's continue on a few more. G, T, C would be C, A, G. C, G, C would be G, C, G. So we could continue on for the, for the rest of that, but for our purposes, just to stick in this short amount of time, we'll stop there. So this... This mRNA is immature at this point, right? And I want to make sure I keep my underlines um, where they should be. So the underline should be here, right? Because those are my introns. So right now it's still containing both the introns and the exons because it hasn't been spliced. mRNA has to go through a maturing process where the introns get spliced out and then the exons are put back together. It also gets a poly A tail, which means a string of adenines or A's added at the end. And it gets a G cap added to the front okay, of the mRNA strand. So we're just going to carry this down. This is still, so this is our mRNA mature. Up here, this was our mRNA okay, that was not spliced, was not mature. So AUG, and then we have C, CU. Now we're not going to include this, right, because that's an intron. It would be spliced out. So the next um, nucleotides that we need to put down here, let's see, where did that end? AAAUCU. Okay, then we have CAG. So we took care of that. And then GCG. And then, of course, it would, it would continue on for the remainder there. And there would be one other intron that would need to be spliced out. So this is the mature mRNA. At this point, the mRNA can travel outside of the nucleus, and a ribosome will assemble around the mRNA to produce the protein. Okay. Now this part, where we go from mRNA to our protein product, this part is called translation, right? That's when we're changing languages from the RNA language to protein or amino acids. Now, the instructions here are to circle the codons. So in our mRNA, remember that the mRNA codes in groups of three or triplets that are called codons, and that's what will indicate what amino acids will be in the protein. So I need to circle these in groups of three to show 
my coat on. That's a G there. Doesn't look very clear. Um, I believe that's a G. I'm going to go back and check. Yes. I need to have better writing. Okay, so there's there's my first one, two, three, four codons. Okay. Now I want you to skip this part for just a second, and we're going to go down to this, which is going to be the protein. Okay, it's it's first an assemblage of amino acids, and once the amino acid sequence is complete, then there may be some folding some uh, modifications that have to occur before the protein is active, okay? But the amino acid sequence is determined by the codons from the mRNA. And what determined the codons for the mRNA? Well, that was the original gene sequence found on the DNA, okay? Now, this amino acid sequence, it's called the primary structure of a protein. If you'll recall, proteins have multiple levels of structure because they're three-dimensional shape is very important to their functionality. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to read these codon by codon. So this first codon, AUG, has been done for us, methionine. The second codon is CCU. We need to find the genetic code chart in order to look up what amino acid that would be. So first letter C, second letter C, third letter U, okay? which means the amino acid would be proline. So we can put proline there. Let's do the next one. Okay, CAG. So first letter C, second letter A, third letter G. Okay, glutamine. And our last codon that we're going to do for this exercise is GCG. G, C, G. Okay, so that's alanine, A-L-A. -A. And of course we could continue on in the process. But that is a brief sum summary of transcription and translation in the cell. I want to, oh, lastly, sorry. I want to point out that the way we get from mRNA to the amino acids is by another type of RNA called tRNA. There's actually three types of RNA. mRNA, which we've been talking about, tRNA, which is what we're talking about here, and rRNA, or ribosomal RNA, which helps make up the actual ribosome. So make sure that you view the videos and read the chapter to look at the details of all this. But this is just walking you through an example of how a, a gene would be transcribed. Now, the neat thing about tRNA is it essentially has two sides, right? One side is going to be complementary to the mRNA, while the other side has the appropriate amino acid attached. So the tRNA has what we call anticodons, which are complementary to the codons. So we see here AUG, if we did those letter for letter, we would see that UAC is the complement. So the complement to C would be G, complement here would be G. Okay, that would be the next, the anticodon. But when you're using the genetic code chart, Okay, the chart is written for the mRNA sequence, right, not the tRNA. I just wanted you to see that the tRNA does have something that's complementary to the codon called the anticodon.